With Studio Ghibli had a stake in the industry, their films became that of a special magical event. Where the essence of childhood and even adulthood was captured in unique and charming ways other films hadn't capitalized on. But with that in mind, not all of them were super mega hits, as their style wasn't absolutely for everyone. Whisper of the Heart is one of those films. While good, the film suffers from one major setback. Tropes. Most notably, Ghibli's tropes. This movie's just layered in the signature Ghibli-isms everyone can instantly recognize from their earlier works up to their library now. But does that fully impede the film, or is there something else in there to write about? Shizuku is a young girl living in a suburban town, singing John Denver songs with her friends, reading library books that were oddly checked out by the same guy beforehand, and living a mostly normal family life. But when she's presented with the question of what she wants to do in life, she meets an old man who encourages her to go into writing stories. However, as she does this, she begins to neglect her schooling while also intermingling with the man's grandson, who so happens to be the driving force of her writing and the mysterious person who checked out books before her. So, Shizuku is often forced to confront the question of how important this is to her, and whether or not it's all worth it at the end, depending on who she's ultimately writing for. Okay, before I get into the meat of things, let me get this out of the way. Yes, watching this movie gives me lo-fi hip-hop and country road memes vibes, and yes, they are hilarious. Now, back to the movie. So, the biggest problem with the film is its predictability and its tropes. If you watch enough Ghibli films, you can definitely pattern where their storytelling is going. Growing up with boys can be irritating but fun? Only yesterday. The magic in imagination is that is real to us? My neighbor Totoro. A young girl who doesn't quite know where she is in life? Well, I feel like I just talked about that. Granted, Whisper of the Heart do these in its own unique ways, but the parallel draws of this movie and its predecessors, and its eventual successes, can be distracting and easily predicted if given the time of thought, which this movie surprisingly gives you sparingly. But for what it is, it is still a good flick. And what it is, is the Studio Ghibli build on Dremont. It's really hard to be mad at this movie, and I think it's because, even though the cliches and tropes have been done before, they do come from a place of realism and nostalgia that you kind of just accept them for what they are. After all, cliches do stem from parts of real life. For example, even though the aspect of adolescent growth and the mental hurdles it causes is touched upon in both this film and Kiki's Delivery Service, I think it's addressed better in this movie because they do give it more time and a larger spotlight for its meaning to sink in for the atmosphere and the main character's drive. Speaking of, what I also don't hear enough people talking about is how good Shizuku is as a character herself. She's not over the top or limited by special circumstances like other young female Ghibli protagonists, she's written very intelligently as a true-to-life teenager. And Shizuku is a fine representation of the notion and feelings of what teens feel at that age. Her rebellious phase, if you can call her that, is one of the best parts of the movie solely for the fact that she's not being rebellious for the sake of being rebellious. She actually has a passion she thinks she can do for the rest of her life, and feels that she can't stop for her own sake, even if it is misguided. Plus, real talk, the music is strangely phenomenal. When you put this lighthearted soundtrack to this roller coaster of a life that is a teen going through a crisis, there's a glimmer of hope and optimism in the atmosphere that's just pleasant. Say what you will about the memes, but the John Denver song is surprisingly fun and even hype to listen to. Like, you know what you're getting yourself into, and it's an overall soothing, nostalgic experience. Side note, the songs sung by Shizuku in both Ghibli's Japanese and Disney's English are cute and therapeutic, and very well done. So while the story is not a 100% guaranteed you'll love it, there is a ton of charm to be found in it. It has a fantastic lead character, good atmosphere and music accompanying it, cheesy but enduring moments, and an early appearance by a very famous cat in Ghibli's repertoire. Even some of the scenes on their own work so wonderfully alone, like the old man's story, or the little concert in the basement, or any of Shizuku's fantasies. So while it isn't the best Ghibli film out there, it is one of the most charming, and dare I say, nostalgic. Go check it out if you can. Maybe a person you're supposed to meet has before you.